Welcome everyone to another episode of the Shaman's Way podcast. As always, this episode comes from the teachings of our amazing friend and shaman in residence, Cricket. We hope you're enjoying these podcasts as much as we enjoy making them, and I'd like to take just a moment to ask you if you would please leave us a rating and a comment in iTunes or whichever podcast player you're listening to us from. Giving us a rating and sharing this podcast with others is the biggest way you can tell us that you like our show. Now, without further ado, on with the episode. A very warm hello to my constant listeners. Thank you for returning and listening to my wandering thoughts and ideas. A very warm hello to my semi-constant listener. and Thank you for turning back in and seeing what words I might share with you and see if that changes some of your own perceptions of shamanism. And I give a very warm welcome to my first-time listeners. For whatever reason that you chose to hang out with me today, I am grateful. Today, I want to talk about the various entrances into the spirit world. So I named this podcast Rabbit Holes and Other Ways. Now, what's going to happen is you're going to lay down on the floor and you're going to put a bandana over your eyes and you're going to listen to the sound of the drum. And the very first journey that you're going to undertake is into the lower world. Now, you have in order to get into the lower world, you're going to have to look for a natural opening. It could be a rabbit hole. It could be a hollowed out tree trunk. It could look like almost anything, even a waterfall or a cave. But it really shouldn't include anything that is electronic. So try to avoid anything that is like an escalator and or an elevator. And when you get into the lower world, you're going to look for your power animal. You're either going to see four of it or four sides of it. It could be a face. It could be a shoulder. It could be a hind end. It could even be the tail end. You're going to ask your power animal, are you my power animal? And it's going to say, yes, now. It can communicate to you either verbally, kinesthetically, and it can communicate to you psychically. But if it says no, you just stay in the natural opening, don't go anywhere. If it says yes, by all means, go along with your power animal. And that is how, ladies and gentlemen, you get into the lower world. How'd you like it? Is that enough information for you? Was it quick enough for you? Because that is a bit of a parody, but not much of an exaggeration of my introduction to how to enter into the lower world. It was explained to me that there were three worlds, the upper world, the lower world, and the middle world. And natural openings or natural ways were always the best, and it seemed like the teacher who taught me seemed to think that the harder you had to work to get into whatever place you were going meant that it was a particularly rewarding journey ahead of you. I believed that for many years. The harder it was, the better it would be, until eventually I was tired of clawing my way through a rabbit hole, an earthworm, a hole made by a badger or a mole. I was tired of getting soil in my nostrils, around my eyes, and coughing if and when I dumped onto the lower world. And sometimes that could look like absolutely anything, as you've heard me say many times. Why am I talking about this? What is this? What is the importance of talking about this particular thing? There are many different ways into the lower world. There are many different ways in the middle world and the upper world. Once I decided to stop trying to fight my way into the lower world and accept that at times there were easier ways to do things and easier ways to get into things, that's when my life as a journeyer became a little bit easier. Do I think that it was valuable for me to have to fight and claw and dig my way into the lower world? Yes, I really do. I think I am the kind of person, I know I am the kind of person, who does not like to take anything for granted and will work hard in order to achieve something. And oftentimes I am suspicious of easy ways. Here we are in the lower world and it looks like anything. And instead of fighting my way, I created a culvert. A culvert was my way. It was tall enough for me to walk through. Over the years, it got shorter and shorter, so I was able to go from my anchor spot into the lower world, entering through my culvert. 
What is an anchor spot? My constant listeners and my semi-constant listeners, you can shut this off for just a few seconds while I explain this to the newcomers. Newcomers, what the anchor spot is, is a place I think is invaluable in our ability to journey and cross between one threshold to another threshold. If we look at it from a psychological perspective, an anchor spot is the psychological threshold between the conscious, the personal unconscious, the spirit world, or the collective unconscious. In saying this, I want to also talk about alternatives to anchor spots. There are alternatives to anchor spots. What I have learned over the years, we have very well-tuned mechanisms for ensuring that we don't get as deep into ourselves and as deep into our journeys, healing ourselves as we could because we have defense mechanisms. We've built defense mechanisms through the years. We have self-sabotaging behaviors. We have all of the things you can insert your own right here. By creating a known pathway from this world to that world is also a sign for your shadow. It's also a sign for your defense mechanisms. It's also a sign for the coping mechanisms that you have learned if you are a trauma survivor, if you have PTSD or any number of other things. What we need at times is to shake up our expectation and what is expected of us. One of the ways that we can do that by shifting the way into the lower world is by using alternative methods. We've explored these methods in my drumming circles. I've explored these methods in my one-on-one healing work, as well as in the classes that I teach face-to-face where I live. We have used mandalas, tarot cards, body images, world trees as entrances and exits into the lower world, the upper world, and the middle world. And I will explain not every single one of them, but I will certainly go through what the uses of them are for and how they can benefit you as an experienced journeyer. If you already have an established relationship with your power animals and you're quite confident in how to get from this world to another world, then I would attempt to use other ways of doing that simply as a means of bypassing your own trips and traps. The more we put on masks, the deeper masks come up. The more we journey, the more healing work we do. Sometimes I feel that those wounds are always deepening, 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 deepening. There's always something else to go, to go, to go, to go to. In doing so, we have developed an immunity at times to the God shots or an immunity at times to the deep understanding of self or a deep awareness or awakening to something that you need to uncover, something that you need to explore. One of the methods that I have used is to create an alternative opening. It is like using a back door. If we use a back door, then the people in front or the spirits in the front or the safety mechanisms in the front won't know you're coming and you get to go in through the house and have an actual look at what the house of self looks like without being directed to this room or that room because your shadow doesn't want you to see this deeper truth or your consciousness isn't quite ready for this type of relationship with the archetype or relationship with the symbol in the spirit world, so on and so forth. How do we use a tarot card? per se. I used this in one of the classes that I taught respecting a shadow tree. We would have a tarot card that we would choose with respect to a question for the shadow and we are exploring our own personal world tree. Each tarot card led us through a different doorway. How do we do this? Sit and look at the tarot card as it is presented towards you. Glean whatever information you find valuable, whether it's the color, whether it's there's a door, what spirit is looking at you, what energy greets you. When you move into the spirit world, the drums start to go. You either place the tarot card on your chest you can keep it in your hand if you if you want. Alternatively, put it under your back and fall through the tarot card. Why do we use a tarot card? Why do I choose to use a tarot card? I like to bring in alternative ways of accessing the sacred and the mysterious worlds. The journey in the 
traditional sense or in the sense that I use of using the drum to go into the lower world and finding going your anchor spot and finding your way in. Although it's tried and true for the experienced journeyers, you have to stretch your wings and try your muscles in other ways. You have to be able to enter and exit things in the ways that you're not familiar with. One of the challenges for that, the positive challenges, is bypassing or moving through your own limitations, pushing up against your boundaries, bumping up against yourself, or to use a, a, you know, a phrase, punching above your weight. The reason that we want to use alternative forms such as a tarot card is because it has a long history with the symbols that are on it. Not every oracle or tarot card has um, symbolism that can easily, and I mean the word easily, be identified through vision saying, oh yes, this tower is a tower, this mountain is a mountain, this water is water, this image is so on and so forth. The use of images as a means of communicating with spirit is old, but in the form of tarot cards, is in the function of humans, is relatively new. But it does have a very unique and authentic draw into the spirit world. For me, it does. For you, this may be something that you'll never attempt because you have don't have a relationship with tarot or oracle cards, and that's absolutely fine. Perhaps this particular small discussion on the tarot as a means of moving through the spirit world might interest you enough to go purchase your very first or acquire your very first set. By recognizing what colors you're looking at, what energies you're looking at, what is what is impressing you the most about that particular tarot card, That's what you're looking for as soon as that drum starts. As soon as that drum starts or that rattle starts and you're taking off on your journey, this is what you put as your intention of being your gateway or your threshold, is the particular image that you have taken into your mind's eye and placed upon your body. I particularly like the method of putting it under my back because I like the feeling of falling into the spirit world. However, if I am moving into the spirit world knowing that there is something on the other side that may not necessarily want me to do particularly well or be particularly healthy, then I will put it on my chest and I will walk through it. So I'm not going in blindly where when you fall backward, that's your six, that's your blind spot. And recognizing that I have confidence in my traveling abilities in order to fall backwards, same as I have confidence in my traveling abilities to step forward into another world. By stepping forward through another threshold or another gateway, you're entering into a new part of the psyche. That's the intention. The intention of moving into a new part of psyche, getting past all of the barriers, gives you another way to move deeper into the self. The self will reveal the inner mysteries, the inner secrets, the messages that the soul wants, the conscious mind to know if it is caught more likely unaware. We often get the most honest answers by the quickest responses to our questions. We also get BS answers, hence why we try another doorway, because we don't want to go through our self-defense system. One of the questions you would ask if you wanted to journey, say, on your own self-healing, and you've journeyed to a piece of trauma over and over again and you think you've cleared everything up. But when you're in the real world, in this 3D reality, you're still manifesting the behaviors, the thought patterns, etc., etc., etc. And if you've ruled out that it isn't a suffering being, a hitchhiker, so to speak, inside your body, then you would be able to utilize this method. You'd want to try another method of entrance. So by using this tarot card, by using the energy of whether it's 400 years, 500 years, 120 years, 80 years, regardless of how many years you believe the tarot has been used as a means of divination and communication and conversation with spirit, the more faith you may or may not have in that card. I'm hoping you do. I think it has a great deal of significance. I can see the symbolism in it. I understand the symbolism of it. I understand that tarot cards have a very interesting story. They tell a great story of the evolution of the soul. 
in finding cards to answer questions respecting the evolution of the soul, the evolution of a wound. Why do I not hold this particular resonance or this particular health or this particular healing? If I use that tarot card, I gain an entrance into my psyche. My psyche, from my perspective, is caught somewhat unawares. If it's caught somewhat unawares, I find that I have a more innocent voice. I have a more innocent relationship with the psyche. When the psyche is in an innocent state, truth is not its enemy. If you're coming at it from an older state, lies could be protection. So if we come in in innocence, truth is not something that is going to be punished. That's one of the reasons why I like to catch things unaware. That's one entrance using the tarot card. Another entrance that I like to use, but I haven't introduced very much with my classes or my one-on-one. I use pictures of myself when I'm younger to attempt to get to a memory or attempt to get to an experience I need to find a deeper lesson for or unearth a particular behavior pattern, something along those lines. I will also use pictures of myself if I want to enter into a certain time frame in the middle world. I was born in 1966, so you can imagine that I have a little bit of life experience and some of you are laughing going, oh my word girl, that's no life experience at all. Wait till you get to 84. I recognize I have a long ways to go yet. When I am coming at it from the particular age and I want to travel say into the 70s, mid 70s, I would choose a picture of myself from that particular time. The reason I do that was, first of all, I wanted to try it for fun and just see whether or not it worked because experimentation for me is a really important part of expanding my spiritual reality and expanding my spiritual understanding. I I do like to take chances and I really do like to experiment and some experiments don't work. This particular one happened to work really well. When I journeyed into the middle world into 1977, I could feel the energy of 1977 in a different way when I tried to journey using my anchor spot going to lower world and entering it in 1977, there was a completely different feel to it. One felt practiced. That was the journey. The anchor spot felt practiced and I was really familiar with that energy. When I journeyed through my picture, air smelt like the air that I remember. The psychic energy was different. That could also be that because I'm going through a picture of me with a younger psychic energy, so a a different psychic energy than I have now, obviously, there could also be that part of it. But I tell you, it is a funky way to get somewhere. And it does give another impression of what you are seeking at that particular time. One of the reasons why you would journey into a particular time or era is if you're trying to track something. Perhaps you're trying to track a soul piece or a curse or something that happened not for yourself. I'm talking about if you're doing this work for someone else. And you enter into a time where your body and your energy are familiar with because you have this picture, regardless of whether or not you remember that action or that reason why that picture was taken. It's another way to tap into what the person you're journeying for is seeking, the energy of what your person is seeking, the, you know, the inquisitor is looking for answers for or healing for or whatever. It's a great way to track. It's another way to track. I like using the different ways that I've talked about tracking in the various podcasts that we've already listened to together and I've spoken and you've listened, especially you, my constant listener, but my newbies, you may want to dig through some of the archives. There's over a hundred there. I'm sure there might be one, possibly even four things that might interest you. Anyway, back to the point of the story of the pictures. It's another way of journeying. It's another way of looking at the world. It's another way of accessing the energy, the psychic energy of the time. It's a way to actively engage with the time and the place. It's a way to actively engage the conscious mind. We are journeying into abstract questions, abstract realities. However, there are generally tangible causalities that got you to the spiritual path to use an abstract method to find what was the beginning of that tangible reality you're experiencing now. 
Another way I have worked with classes over the years is to work with mandalas or mandalas. When I started teaching classes on entering and exiting using gatekeepers, exploring different forms of anchor spots or how to move through a world you're unfamiliar with, I brought in the concept of journeying to find your own mandala. So this particular way of entering and exiting the spirit world is best done in pairs or in groups. If you and I were journeying together, what would happen is you would journey to your spirit world, however you wanted to do that, using an anchor spot or whatever. You would go to your spirits and you would ask for a mandala that is doorway between another journeyer's world and your world. This doorway gets them into your spirit world. And what I will do on my side is the same thing. I'm going to journey to my spirits and I'm going to ask them to give me a mandala to create and share with my partner. I wouldn't particularly do this if you didn't trust the person. I wouldn't particularly do this if you thought there was like mojo hanging around that was like bad. I mean that really, although I'm saying that in a joking manner, I'm so not joking. This is a form of very fragile spirit work and is, I don't often talk about sorcery, but it is definitely an avenue where someone who practiced sorcery consciously or unconsciously could really mess you up. So be very careful. Be very careful when you're giving out any entrances or exits into your spirit world because it is your world. This is your sacral sign place. This is where you have sovereignty. This is your autonomous reality. This is your world. Oftentimes, I'm just going to step back and say a little bit about when we go into the world. I know many of you practice shielding. I know many of you carry amulets. I know many of you carry stones. So you already have an existing relationship to the safety of your energetic body, your psychic body. You already have established a link between I am safe when, and fill in the blanks. When we use the mandala, we are giving permission for this person to journey to find out X, Y, Z. Why would I ask my people in my class to give out something that is so vulnerable. The only reason that I use this, or the only times that I use this, is when we are journeying to deep questions that we have, not maybe not only about a health issue or a mental health issue, but maybe there are intergenerational traumas, or perhaps there are other influences in your world that you cannot see. When we have another set of eyes journeying on our behalf, spirit bends over backwards to help us to discover, to engage, to pull in information to give to the seeker. I think that is beautiful. The use of the mandala is sacred. The use of the mandala is a key. To use this key, you're giving someone access to something you can't get to. That is the reason for using this sacred doorway. It is to get to a part of yourself that is so hidden, even your trackers can't find it. Or if they can find it, there are so many defense layers over top of it that you can't access the grain of truth, the innocent voice, the voice that believes that the truth is not harmful. Seeking those parts of ourself, working with that, mind medicine, we need alternative ways to access the medicine, create the medicine, create the sacred space, hold the sacred space, journey in the sacred space, gather what information we need from the sacred space, exit the sacred space, and place that answer, that energy, that formula, whatever it is, into the hands, the body, the mind, the eye, the heart, the ears of the seeker. 
what to do with the mandala after. I would burn it. I would burn it and offer the smoke because the smoke is the greatest heoka. It defies gravity. It goes up into the world. If we turn our mandala, our sacred opening, and we give it to the heoka, then it follows the opposite. So therefore, closing that mandala, closing that door. It's very important to close the door between the spirit worlds because you are creating that sacred opening. You're creating an energetic pathway to self, to yourself. Another way of journeying in the middle world is I start off in my house. When the drum starts, I picture myself in my house. I picture myself going out through my front door and then I travel to wherever I need to go. Oftentimes, if I'm looking for something in the middle world, if I'm traveling in this way, I've already looked at a map. If I haven't looked at a map, then I've looked at a drawing of where I'm supposed to be going. I use this particular method if I'm doing a house clearing and I want to journey to the house, then I want to go in the middle world and I would have the layout of the house sent to me by the people who are who I'm doing the work for. If I am seeking to find something that is lost, this is another way that I'm going to do that. I'm going to go out my front door. This is the conscious mind's access to the sacred world by using conscious signs and symbols. When we have an anchor spot, that's an abstract sign and symbol. Even though you are supposed to create your anchor spot in one of your favorite places in nature, at least you know, that's what I was taught. Anchor spots can shift and change. However, using a concrete cornerstone to where you're moving your entrance and your exit creates a different relationship between the spirit world, the, the layers of the spirit world or the layers of the middle world. When we use the middle world doorway as an entrance and an exit, you can expect to find a different type of energy, a quality more akin to what you could be consciously aware of if you tuned in with a little bit more presence or alert awareness or awake awareness. This is just another heightened psychic field to travel in the middle world. If I want to travel in the middle world for access to the mysteries of, say, the little people, to the dwarves, to the nature spirits, the devas, whatever I think is invaluable for me to journey and to make presence or make known in the middle world, I would use, an, although I would go out my front door, I would use, I, I don't, wouldn't have a map. I wouldn't know, I wouldn't have used my tracker. I wouldn't turn on my tracker because I'm not looking for psychic awareness in just a heightened psychic awareness in the world I live in. I'm looking for nature's psychic awareness. So even though I would use my front door, immediately out my front door would be another representation of the, of the middle world, only it would look different or shaded in a different way or maybe even have a completely different forest than the deciduous forest that is here in Alberta, the boreal forest. The trances are also different. Using a rattle is a different trance and a different way of entering and exit the, the spirit's worlds. It's if you don't if you use another form of entrance and you're using the rattle, often it's associated or I use it in my classes when I am teaching trans postures or if I'm sharing trans postures with other people. The rattle is often another way or a different way of breaking into the spirit world, shaking up the spirit world, shaking up the energy of the spirit world. I can move through it in a different way than what the drum does. For me, it affects a different type of awareness. It affects how I perceive and am perceived by the spirit world. Learning different ways, different tools, and different techniques to enter and exit the spirit world only gives us other tools in order to deepen our relationship with self, with the natural world, and with the spirit world. They are also tools to exercise our strengths and our confidence. Don't be surprised if you get bit in the heels in ways that you hadn't expected. 
Don't be surprised if you have to be a little more alert than you would in others. But if you weren't an experienced journeyer, or if you weren't confident in your journey experience, would you try this? Some of you are going to say yes anyway, even though you've never, you know, you've never tried or this, you're like, heck yes, fuck yeah, I'm going to try this, let's go, woo, because that's what I'm like. But, you know, there are some of you who are, are not like that. There are alternatives. There are always alternatives to grow our spiritual body, to grow our spiritual mind, to open and access the narrow pathways that we are traveling along, that we have traveled along for millennia and for generations and generations. When we use these natural openings, these natural ways into the spirit world, we are accessing a whole series of other perceptions and realities that ultimately enhance our experience in this world. Even though we may have really jarring experiences, experiences that leave you upended, they still ultimately inform the core of the spirit, the core of self. They ultimately inform us. We ultimately learn and heal from it. There can be psychic trauma when we enter into an altered state of consciousness, when we enter into a spirit world, you would be remiss not to think that. But I also am aware over the years that I've been doing this, that is far less often happens than does happen. We have an incredible team of spirits who live with us on this side, who greet us on the other side, and who don't have to go through the processes we go through to shift consciousness and awareness. There are many ways of shifting your consciousness and your awareness. Meditation, you don't always need a drum. Some people like using the drum. I like using the drum because it is part of the narrow pathways. It's how I built my relationship and my, literally, my exits and my entrances into the spirit world. The drum has, it changes me physiologically, it changes my brain waves, it changes my state of relaxation, it changes my state of awareness because I practiced it. The rattle does all of those things as well, but it gives a different timbre, a different quality, a different vibration to the spirit world than the drum does. They're apples and oranges. Didgeridoo, the didgeridoo is phenomenal to journey with, and the experiences of the didgeridoo are also quite different than the experiences that I have with the rattle and the drum. They're all alternative ways of entering and exiting the spirit world using, as we talked about, using the tarot cards, using mandalas, using different entrances and exits in the various levels of the worlds that we already have. There are different ways of entering the spirit world using different sounds, different acoustically or sonically driven ways of altering the theta wave gives us this access to the great beyond, the great unknown, the great spirit world, the collective unconscious. All of those things can be spoken with in the same breath, but there are subtle differences between all of them. That is all I have to say about that today. Tomorrow, I could have, I'm sure I'll think of, oh, I should have said this and I should have said that. <laughs> but for today, I want to express my gratitude for you for opening your time, opening your ears and opening your hearts to the words that I have chosen to share with you today. I hope that you explore and continue to explore the phenomenal worlds that spirit does provide for us using all ways and all methods to explore. If you are a new beginner, I really would encourage you to create an anchor spot. But I'm also aware that no two people learn alike, no two people journey alike, and no two people use the same guidelines and the same structure as what I teach. I am aware that there are all many alternatives. As many alternatives as there are, there are sacred souls who express those alternatives, alternative expressions and entrances and X ways to spirit. So rabbit holes and other ways. Sayonata.
Thank you again for joining us here on the Shaman's Way podcast. If you have any questions, would like to make a request for a future episode, or if you're looking for other shamanic resources, including free drumming tracks, please visit us at shamansway.net. Until the next episode, be well, everyone.